after thinking about it for several years, I finally bought myself a 3D printer. Seriously, Creality, you couldn't give me something other than orange? And indeed, that is the power supply. This is indeed a 32-bit processor. These were all being shipped to America, and it wasn't set correctly. <laughs> I've taken a few minutes and gotten things kind of cleaned up and rearranged in a neat orderly fashion. I think we're ready to start. Now supposedly, I think Creality says you can put this thing together in five minutes or less. Now I don't know if that really means someone like me who's just starting, has never done this before, if that means five minutes or less for them, or if that's someone who already knows what to do and it's just five minutes of the sheer physical activity of putting one together. We'll see. Now there isn't a lot to do here, it appears, because there's very few parts. There's the gantry, there's the base plate, the control panel, the handle, and the spool holder. And that's it. What is that? One, two, three, four, five or six pieces that need to be put together. It seems pretty straightforward. Now, I also taken and removed the bolts from their packaging and put them in their own little holder trays and went ahead and grabbed the correct driver bits for each uh, bolt size. So, let's go. Okay, so step one, install the gantry frame. We need the base, we need the gantry frame, and we need these long bolts. And looks like you put it you put the gantry on here and run the bolts up from the bottom. Each side rail has a machined uh, slot where the vertical rails go. That's, that's really nice. I mean, assuming that they're correctly machined to the right uh, specifications, it really eliminates any slop or possibility of a mistake putting the gantry on. So that, that, that seems like a really good idea. Um, not sure how to go about this really, because I I think the best way to do this, I'm going to take and turn this and I'm gonna hang this rail off the back edge of the table. That way it'll sit there and I can put the bolts in from the bottom. Try that out. Yeah, that seems it's gonna oh now which way does this go? Okay. I see the tightener knob here in the diagram. And again, just trying to figure out what's the front and what's the back. Okay, I don't see in this diagram, it's showing it, and I don't see the power switch. Something around on the front of here. I don't know, this is really hard to figure out which way this goes. Okay, I, I'm assuming that the the Creality logo here and this Creality logo. This is the front. This looks like the front. Look at the diagram. Yes, okay, the control panel I can see mounts right here. So yeah, the Creality logos are toward the front. So this is the right position. Okay, it drops. Appears. Feels like it's dropping into position or into place. Hmm. These grooves are not, oh, there we go. It's kind of hard to feel them correctly at first. All right, let's we'll see how this works. Ah. All right, that seemed like it was easy enough. There isn't really a hole on the bottom. You've got to go up through the grooves. It's kind of blind guesswork what I'm doing here. Okay. Then I can just use the bit itself as like a little screwdriver much easier than an allen wrench i'm just gonna finger tighten the bolts here turn it around 
do the same thing, hang it off the side. That is not going in right. Ah, okay. I think. Ah. Switching over to the drill here. And let me turn this around now. What was going on is I had one side in and bolted, and the other side I had to push out. I had to spread this frame out a bit in order to get the bolt holes to line up. So it wasn't a perfect match, but uh, once I figured that, it, that out, it wasn't a big deal to take care of. It's saying to twist the couplings to raise the x-axis to the position shown which is about halfway up. Now this, this is all the way to the top. Do I need to move it down to the middle? Uh, okay, I guess we'll do that. And I'll do that by twisting. There we go. Okay, that's, that's very easy. You could really just do one because they are linked by this belt at the top here. And I'm just using my thumb or finger to push it. Okay, that was easy enough. So the x-axis bottom profile. Two z-axis profiles installed on the inner step. Okay. So what? It doesn't tell me what else to be doing here. It tells me it's like identifying a couple of parts, but doesn't tell me why I need to know these things. Don't think we're going to make five minutes. Yeah, I don't know what that's supposed to be telling me. It's almost like it's just purely informational. Step two is install the display. And that installs over here. There's two of these button head hex drive bolts. I don't know what is with these bolts where these drives jam into them. Ah, they won't let go. And we'll leave the plastic on for now. After it is connected, install the display cable. I presume it's the one taped down here, right by the controller. This connector is very hard to see which way it's keyed and which way this is supposed to go in. This might have been easier to connect first and then screw into position. Unless I had the completely wrong connector. No, there we go. Wow, that, that was kind of tough. And that probably would have been easier to put the connector in first and then come back and bolt the display in place. Okay, install the rack. What's Oh, the rack, that's what I would call a spool holder. So put the, 
actual holder part onto this swiveling piece. Take and put it in this side. And it, okay, it turn. Okay, it like turns. It's keyed. There's like a little swivel thing. It, you turn it until it pops into the groove, and then just twist it, and it locks on. And this looks like it just slides onto the extrusion on the opposite side from from the, on, the, on the opposite side from the control panel. Like here, this way. Hmm, don't want to just push real hard. I don't know. Is it pain in the side or like that? Cut to the directions again. All it is is pictograms. There's nothing, no text. Oh, okay. Well, that time it went right on. Oh, all right. Huh? All right, I got you. You need to put it on here, tilt it up until it kind of snaps into place, and then it lays down. Wow. And then this can slide over you can, wherever this needs to be, and then it'll fold in nice and compact. Wow, I probably spent five minutes alone just trying to install the spool holder. Step four, install the handle. Okay, so we need to install T-nuts. Okay, it goes into this. Okay, we can't slide the T-nuts in. So I'm guessing that we need to put the T-nuts onto the bolts and then put the T-nuts into the groove and then turn them. That's kind of typical for this sort of stuff. So, so I'm just going to take the T-nut and I'm going to drop the screw in there so that it comes out the bottom here and then slide my pinky in and put on a T-nut where the the boss or the, the, the pokey up part is facing towards the handle. And that should be the way it works. This is really clumsy. Get these T-nuts lined up this way. They go in, and then we'll just try turning it. Okay, the T-nuts rotated into place. All right, it looks like, I don't feel like pulling them back out, but it looks like maybe the T-nuts are not actually symmetric, so they'll only turn 90 degrees before they jam into the the uh, the channel. <clears throat> well, let me look at this again here. Adjust this work at the handle in the middle, more or less. There's also a bit of slop side to side, so you want to like hold it, and make sure that it's not all the way back in the back or all the way forward. Or maybe you don't care. I tend to be kind of meticulous about these things.
Okay. Ooh. That's not not particularly heavy. It's not particularly light either. Handles on. Okay. Got the handle installed. Step five. Easier to huh? E I don't know what this means. Easier to replace the platform and adjust the belt. I guess these are directions on how to replace the platform and how to tighten the belts. It's just we it's just weird phrasing. Easier to replace the platform and adjust the belt. Rotate the glass pick and replace. Wow. Rotate the glass pick and place hand plate for platform. <laughs> it's a very, very strange translation there. I presume they're talking about these little cam things here that you can rotate those out of the way and then, yeah, the plate. This glass plate it comes right off of the build plate or it comes off that carrier. Let's take and peel this off. Always a cheap thrill. Put this back in. Hey, these are harder to get back in than it looks. That's really cool. Hmm. Yeah, those are really quite tight. Man, that's really much harder than it should be, I think. It locks back down. So I guess uh, if you break the plate or you want to replace it with something else, um, that's how you do it. And let's also peel off the cover of the control panel. Okay, is that it? Ah, uh, okay, no, no, <laughs> yeah, I gotta connect all the cables. A few moments later. After a bit of cleaning up and organizing, we're ready to connect the cables. Looking here in the manual, it says, step one, connect the 16 pin port to the no Connect the 16 pin port to the nozzle adapter board. 16 pin port. Do they mean 16 pin connector, 16 pin header? I, I, okay, what is it? This is, okay, this is step one. Yeah, one. Uh, there's this, boy, this, these numbers here, are like really tiny and in a light blue print. It's, it's kind of hard to even notice that they're there. Right, connect the 16 pit port one. Okay, there's one. So it's pointing here at the extruder. I don't know why it says nozzle adapter. Well, okay, whatever. I find that language a bit confusing. Um, 16 pit. What is this? Why? Well, where is the action? Oh, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> the, the diagram doesn't show the tube here. And so looking at it, I'm thinking I'm looking at this thing curving around there and that that's the tube. It's actually the wiring harness going up there. Okay, that's that. All right. I think I've got it now. Okay, so it looks like it does go right in here. The little ridge is right there and there's the slot. So this is the direction it goes. Let me make sure that this is not twisted. Okay. And if this is like most other connectors, these ears should pop up and lock onto this connector when I push down. Yes. All right, that's good. Step two, connect the extruder adapter board with the 14 pin port. Okay, they must mean 14 pin connector. Where is two? All right, here is two. 
two is over here somewhere. It appears to be pointing up here, and there is a connector right there. So, assuming that this is going to go in there. Okay, there's the ridge. The slot is on top, so yes, it does go this way. Okay, that looks good. Uh, there is no kind of locking mechanism on this one. Uh, well, I presume because this doesn't move. Well, this does move around. Uh, because this gantry goes up and down. I, I don't know why that one doesn't lock, but it doesn't. Step three is to connect the Z-axis motor cable, which is located right here on the back of this Z-axis motor. The connector is the one that what I've, I had already untaped the, this cable, both these cables here. And so, let's see here. This one is... Yes, it is tagged Z1, and let's see here. The two little ridges are on top, and the opening is on top, so those go up. Pop right in, and let's see. Um, okay, no, the, this, this motor doesn't move, so that's locked down there. Okay, that's fine. Now, step... Four, connect the photoelectric switch wire, which is over, over here, okay? Let's see how this is supposed to go together. Okay, oh, there's a little ridge right there. Uh, no, that doesn't... Okay, I guess that's the way. We'll try, see if it goes together that way. And, yes, snaps together. Goes to this thing here, which, uh, well, quite honestly, I don't know what that is. What did you call it? A photoelectric switch wire. Photoelectric, that... Uh, Sounds to me like a limit switch, but I don't see. Oh, oh, okay. If you look right here, there's this little metal blade. And what happens is when the gantry is coming down, that blade slides inside the, these two little prongs here. I presume breaks a photoelectric beam and acts as a limit switch. At least that's what I think is going on. Okay, some momentary confusion. I got finished going through the steps. The next step is to connect the power cable. But I've got this wire hanging here, and uh, it doesn't, it's not really in the directions. And in looking at it, I looked at the marker here. Luckily, they do put these little um, identifiers, and it says Z2. So I look back in the manual, and it says in step three, connect the Z-axis motor cable. Singular, one cable, which I did right here on this z-axis motor however in looking at the manual again i noticed in the diagram there's something else over here and it just says like z2 cable all right that step in the directions could be a whole lot clearer to note that there are two z-axis motor cables you have to connect but then of course i'm looking i'm thinking well where's the connector <laughs> i don't see one well it's actually hidden well, maybe not hidden, but it's around here on the inside in what looks like it's going to be a fairly inconvenient place to reach. So let's let's give it a try. And I did notice that it is marked Z2. Now let's see here. These ridges were up. Yeah, and this has the open slot on the top here. So that should just it's there. Okay. Confusion solved, reality, those instructions could be a little clearer. Our last bit to do on buttoning this up in terms of cabling is to use these wire management clips to tie the, the wiring harness to the filament tube here. And they just they twist open and then you twist them closed again. 
put one up near the extruder. One sort of middle-ish. And I guess one more towards the back here. Not, not super effective, the one I can see. Uh, I'll, I might end up replacing those with something else. Okay, I think we're ready to put some power to this thing, and hopefully we don't get any smoke.